Hello, it's me, Yang. Welcome back to my channel. This is the part of video ng life cycle of the parasites. So if you haven't watched the part 1, pause this video right now, go and watch the part 1, and after you finish, go back right away here. And continue. So sa part 1 ng video ko, na-explain ko sa inyo yung life cycle ng trematodes. And for today, I am going to explain naman yung life cycle of some parasites. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi guys! So let us start first with the life cycle of Ascaris lumbricoids. So feces, pwede tayong makakita ng fertilized eggs or unfertilized eggs and even adults pag super infection na. So this serve as the diagnostic stage. The eggs will embryonate and become infective under favorable conditions such as moisture, temperature, and humidity sa soil, formalin, and if madelayed ang stool testing ng 2 hours or more than. The humans can be infected through ingestion and inhalation. So ang first target organ ng mga Ascaris lumbricoids is the small intestine. We all know, ang small intestine ay nagko-contract. Pag nag-contract, there will be an egg hatching and will release the first larva of the Ascaris, which is the L3. Ascaris lumbricoids is one of the heart-lung migration. Ang mga heart-lung migration ay ang mga Ascaris lumbricoids, Strongyloids stercoralis, and hookworms. The Ascaris will now travel to the heart. It will be pumped by the heart going to the lungs because the Ascaris needs an oxygen para masabi that they are already capable of infecting. So this L3 will now go back to the small intestine and develop into L4, which means adults na sila. So the adults are going to mate and they will produce a fertilized eggs. And since nasa small intestine, Ang fertilized eggs will be hatched and will release L3. This L3 will migrate to the heart and lungs for the oxygen and will go back to the small intestine to be developed into L4. They will mate, they will produce a fertilized eggs, and they will release an L3 and the Ascaris lumbricoids life cycle continues. Let us go now to the family of hookworms. These are Negator americanus, also known as American hookworm, the American murderer, or the New World hookworm. Next is the Ancilla stomat duodenale, also known as the Old World hookworm. And then the Ancilla stomat brasiliense, or the cat hookworm, and the Ancilla stomat caninum, or the dog hookworm. Let us start first with the life cycle of Negator americanus and the Ancylostoma duodenale. The diagnostic stage is the fertilized egg, which is seen in a stool or feces. For the soil, it will embryonate. And after two days, in soil, the embryonated egg will now develop into raptidiform larva. So this raptidiform larva will develop into the filariform larva after 7 to 10 days. So let me give you an example for the hookworms. So kung mapapansin nyo, yung mga bata ay laging present. Tapos bigla na lang naging absirul. So ganito yan. Yung mga bata, mahilig silang maglaro sa lupa. So once ma-expose sila sa soil, the filariform larva will now penetrate their skin. So, nagkakaroon ng skin penetration. The first target is the vein. Tapos, magkakaroon ng larval migrations since ang hookworm is one of the heart-lung migration. It will travel to the lungs and from the lungs, it will the small intestine. So, sa small intestine, the filariform will develop into the L4, which means adults. So, ang mga adults, magbimate sila, they will produce a fertilized egg. 
Since nasa small intestine, magko-contract, this fertilized egg will be hatched into filariform larva. So pag filariform larva, magkakaroon ulit ng larval migration. It will travel back to the lungs, from the lungs to the small intestine again. So sa small intestine, magde-develop, magme-mate, and then they will produce fertilized egg, ma-hatch into filariform larva, tapos magkakaroon ng larval migration, will go to the lungs, babalik sa small intestine. So paulit-ulit na life cycle ng mga Nekator Americanus at Ancelostoma duodenale. But, the Ancelostoma duodenale can also infect the human not just by skin penetration but also by ingestion. So, pag Ancelostoma duodenale, they can infect not just by skin penetration but also by ingestion. So, they can infect the human through ingestion, for example, expressed milk. So, ang madalas magkaroon ng ancelostoma duodenale ay ang mga bata. So, once the filariform larva is ingested, they will go first to the small intestine. So, from small intestine, it will have a larval migration, so it will not travel to the lungs. From the lungs, will go back to the small intestine again. So, sa small intestine, the filariform larva will develop into L4, which is adults. These adults will mate and will produce a fertilized egg. Magko-contract at magre-release ng L3, filariform larva. This L3 will go back to the lungs for the larval migration. So parang kanina, paulit-ulit din siya guys. From lungs, will go back to the small intestine, will develop into L4, will become adults, they will make produce a fertilized egg. It will be hatched into filariform larva. This filariform larva will go under larval migration again. And the life cycle continues. Let's go now to the life cycle of Ancelostoma caninum and Ancelostoma brasiliense. As you can see, maikli na lang yung life cycle nila. So I started with the filariform larva na agad. Since I already explained how the fertilized egg will develop into filariform larva. So let us proceed now to the mode of transmission, which is the skin penetration. So the filariform larva will penetrate the skin. It will first go to the veins and then into the lungs since it undergoes larval migration. Dito, magsa-separate na sila. So depende kung anong klaseng hookworm. Pag ancillostoma caninum, it will travel to the artery and will stay sa skeletal muscle. Pag ancillostoma brasiliense naman, it will travel to the artery and will stay in subcutaneous tissue. Next is the life cycle of the trichuris trichuria. The diagnostic stage is the fertilized egg and in soil, it will embryonate and become the infective stage. The humans can be infected through ingestion. So, our first target organ is the small intestine. Then, there will be an egg hatching, so it will release filariform larva. The larva will travel to the large intestine, since there is no larval migration and because Trichuris trichuria love the methane gas, which can be found sa large intestine. This gas is the mabahong utot, yes. And then, the filariform larva will develop into adults and these adults will mate and produce fertilized egg. So the fertilized egg will develop into filariform larva. One of the pathogenesis of a person with trichuris trichuria is rectal prolapse, which is like hemorrhoids, or what we call Almoranas. So when doctors examine the anus, there are lots of larva. Next is the Enterobius vermicularis, which is also known as pinworm. Let me give you a scenario. Yung katabi mong matulog ay may Enterobius vermicularis. So ba siyang magalaw hanggang sa nakaharap ka na sa puwet niya? So ang tendency ay mai-inhale or mai-ingest mo ang parasite's egg. 
So, pag na-inhale or na-ingest mo, ang first target organ is the small intestine. From the small intestine, it will travel into the large intestine and develop into adults to produce embryonated egg. Kung ang trichuris trichuria needs methane gas, this enterobus vermicularis needs carbon dioxide. So that's it guys. I hope that this video helped you. So please like and don't forget to share with your friends, especially medtechs out there. Also hit the subscription button and notification bell so you will be updated for my next video. Because this is not yet the end of the life cycle of parasites videos. There will be another part of this which will be uploaded next week. So make sure na nakasubscribe kayo para wala kayong ma-miss out. And I also want to hear about you guys. So if you have any questions or suggestions, please comment down below. And for more information, refer to the description box below. So thank you so much for watching. See you in my next video. Bye!